<laughs> Today's April 24th. Uh, happy Tuesday morning, Las Virginis Nation. Uh, if you can't tell, Ryan and I. Ryan oh my gosh, we have a little. Uh, here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Dan Stepanowski. Ryan uh, is dealing with some multitasking struggles. Yes. The echoes bothering him, but we have uh, Dr. Dan with us here. Uh, this morning. All right, Dan, thanks for joining us. Well, you, we uh, sprint to the finish this morning, gentlemen. I noticed uh, already we have a little perspiration uh, coming from the brow. Yeah. Uh, a lot going on uh, this morning. So all fun stuff, all positive things. Uh, it's kind of the nature nature of the biz. All exciting. exciting. So, Dan, yeah. welcome to LVOSD Live. First time on LVOSD Live, yeah? It's always exciting when your director gives you a call at 6.45 in the morning. Yes. yes. The things, problems to solve. We have uh, we have a golden rule. Uh, it's never exciting to get a phone call before 8 a.m. from the director or after 8 a.m. Yes. And that happens. Before 8 a.m. or 8 p.m., right? 8 p.m., yeah. After 8 p.m., no good. Before 8 a.m. Yeah. yeah. When my no phone's good. ringing that early in the morning, I know it's uh, something exciting. <laughs> New challenge to overcome. Exactly. Well, I'm excited to have Dan on because uh, sure. not only are we going to talk about some of the exciting programs that we're, uh, we're working towards, but I also get to know Dan a little better. I've, I've yeah. got actually was thinking this morning i was excited for lvc live glad you guys um a lot, a lot of pressure first. what's what's like our what's our lead off question uh, so my my lead off question is just yeah. how did dan land in lvsd i'm yeah. curious about that so i know you were a principal at beverly you had a, a stint in the navy but you lived on the east coast can you walk us through the history of uh, dr dan Wow. <clears throat> oh, it's a, uh, where, where do you want me to start? Let's start with birth. <laughs> no, let's start with uh, college. I say, yeah, like, how'd you, how'd you know you want to be a, a teacher? And uh, I was a physics major at Villanova, um, ROTC. So I was in the Navy ROTC, which is a Reserve Officer Training Corps. Nice. Did you uh, get a scholarship uh, through that? Full scholarship, yep. And then uh, after graduating from Villanova in 1990, I was in the Navy for four and a half years on a destroyer and a cruiser. Um, served in Operation Southern Watch in the Persian Gulf. I have lots of stories about that. Then got out of the Navy in 94, 95, and went to University of San Diego, got my teaching credential. My mom was an art teacher, so mm. I wanted to get into art education. I mean, I wanted to get into education. Mom's a, mom was an art teacher, that's awesome. Nice, so uh, in the Navy, so you go from Villanova, you go into the Navy, so what, what are some of the places you saw in the world? So you said Persian Gulf. Like, uh, we did counter narcotics operations off of uh, South America, so we were off Ecuador, Costa Rica, Panama, um, basically sitting off the coast, looking deep into the jungle to see if planes took off where there's no runways. Oh, and that meant that they had built a runway and they were carrying contraband and drugs. Wow. wow. So we would uh, we would look for that. It, you'd see a plane take off where there's no runway. It had no flight plan. It, had, it was not squawking any signals. It didn't have its lights on. So we'd call in to Colombia or Ecuador or Costa Rica and tell them, hey, we're tracking this airplane right now. Yeah. Wow. Career-wise, how did you get from San Diego to Beverly Hills? So it was back in the day we had to buy special resume paper. Oh. So I had a couple extras. I loved San Diego. Didn't want to leave San Diego. But as a joke, I sent one to Beverly Hills High School because <laughs> I had extras. Because of the name? <laughs> and That's 90210. Right? <laughs> it's a wonderful TV show. Yeah. They called me up, um, offered me an interview. And I didn't know anything. I didn't know those in North and South were big and little Santa Monica Boulevard. So I was on big Santa Monica Boulevard and yeah. you'll never find Beverly Hills High School. Those are on big Santa Monica Boulevard. Those are uh, confusing. I will. I will. And I've been lost there many times. Yeah. Do we need both? Yeah. And there's like a East to West and it's tough to follow. I get it. All right. So you throw it out as kind of a, a joke, a uh, Hail Mary, if you will. And get an interview or how's it? What yeah. I went up there, interviewed with Ben Bushman, who was awesome guy, almost like a second father to me. And I didn't even know he was in the interview panel. I, didn't even, I was late because I was lost on Big Santa Monica Boulevard. So nothing's worse than being late to an interview. I know. So I walked in and they're like, you don't have a chance at the job. I said, okay. <laughs> so I took my jacket off and I just like relaxed and just fired freely. That's awesome. In the middle of the interview, the principal jumped up. I didn't even know it was the principal at the time. And he said, would you like to meet somebody? And I'm like, sure, let's go meet somebody. Yeah. So he walked me out of his office into the superintendent's office and offered me a job. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. So you taught Pretty physics cool. at Beverly Hills High? AP Physics, Astronomy. They have a planetarium, so I taught astronomy. They have a planetarium at the school? I don't know. That's exciting. That's where I proposed to my wife. In, in the, the planetarium. planetarium. Wow. So what's, uh, wow. On a blue moon. On a blue moon. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, good serious. That's awesome. That's awesome. So excited. are you an astronomy kind of guru? Uh, yeah. Part of the reason I got the job is it's a great study and small things have big impact. Yeah. So I was like, I loved astronomy. So my parents got me like a small cheap little telescope when I was a kid, nice. and they needed a physics and astronomy teacher. There were two candidates, another was a woman, 
And I had more astronomy background than she had. Not a lot, just because I was sort of an amateur astronomer. Yeah. Do uh, yeah. Sean and Kirsten, do you take a telescope out with them sometimes? Or? Yeah, Sean's really into it. Oh, that's awesome. So physics, astronomy teacher, how did that translate to the path to administration? Um, while I was a teacher, I, I just took advantage of leadership opportunities. So I wrote, helped write their distinguished school, their blue ribbon. We got national blue ribbon. Um, and then the principal started tapping me for more and more things, and they um, asked me to apply. So I was the youngest assistant principal ever and the youngest principal in school history. Wow. wow. So That's how old were you when you were an AP? 30. 30, okay. And 33 as principal. That's, uh, that's talk about uh, being thrown into a high profile job, you know, principal in a very, um, you know, high profile area that I imagine you, you learn trial by fire. It was a deep end of the pool. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. For those uh, watching live, uh, you can uh, ask questions of Dr. Dan or uh, give us comments at facebook.com slash LVSD, facebook.com slash LVSD. Uh, many of our viewers, we had uh, about 550 last week, Steve, for the Nikki Goldstein episode. Nice. Uh, comments it's and pressure. ask questions. Yeah. Really helps uh, the ante a little bit. Ask questions yeah. afterwards. And feel free, please, put them on facebook.com slash LVSD. You do not need to have a Facebook account to watch there. Um, we're also on youtube.com slash LVSD um, as well. You can watch this episode. But uh, the comments and the questions at facebook.com slash LVSD. We love seeing the likes. Again, you see a little glimmer in Steve's eye when you get a like. We just had a like pop through, and I see a little sparkle. So uh, <laughs> you're, you're at Beverly Hills, uh, youngest principal ever. How do uh, you land in LVSD? But, uh, you lived up here, right? So you were doing a commute. Yeah, um, I met my wife and we got married in um, 2000 and we were looking to find a house and um, we were looking at Woodland Hills. One of the assistant principals at Beverly Hills lived in Woodland Hills and so we just said, well, Calabasas is just one more edge, so let's check that out. And um, We saw a bunch of houses we liked but didn't fall in love with and then we were um, at the uh, real estate offices right by a Coffee Bean in Calabasas mm -hmm. and our agent had a picture of a house and we're like, What's that? And he's like, well, I own that. I'm trying to sell that. And we're like, we want that. <laughs> yeah, I'm we'll trying to buy that. Yeah. <laughs> so we, he walked us over right down the street from uh, AU, right? And we loved it. We walked to the neighborhood, like walked around the block, and then made an offer, and boom. We have... Uh, oh, we just got another like. If you saw a little sparkle in uh, Steve's eye. <laughs> we have a wide range of audiences here. So we have uh, community members. We have a lot of... Uh, LVSD team members of ours, uh, staff and faculty that watch. I was wondering if you have, um, with that career path, uh, advice for people looking to get into administration. How do they get a the foot in the door? What are some things that you've learned uh, that would be great for um, people that are just kind of entering that administrative field or people that have been there for, for 10 years? Yeah, I think um, grabbing any leadership opportunities mm -hmm. you have at your school site, and there are many. Um, relative to adoptions, right. um, course approvals, course requests, grade level leads, right. teachers in charge. So there's a whole bunch of leadership opportunities baked into every school. So seize those. Let your um, principal know you're interested in that. Um, seek out a mentor. Um, it could be the principal, could be anyone in the district office, cabinet, mm -hmm. you guys, uh, any of us. Um, and uh, obviously then look at our Center Right X credentialing program. Right. And read. I mean, there's tons of books. Um, I love studying leadership, and so Switch was one of the most powerful books. Yeah. I've got, you know, Student and Staff 360. I've got a whole bunch of books out there. Best leadership book I've ever read. I love reading about leaders also just to see the challenges they went through. Um, most recent example, we had a celebration of life for Alice Stell. Oh, yeah. What a phenomenal, I mean, what an amazing study in leadership. First of all, on the personal side, she fostered 17 children. Whoa. Up to four at a time know. in her house. She had five of her own children. She uh, also provided um, housing for unwed pregnant ladies yeah. in, you know, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. I mean, that was a big deal. Uh, she was one of the original 35 owners in Hidden Hills. Husband jumped in the shower one morning, turned on the shower, no water. So what does he do? He founds the Las Virgins Municipal Water District. <laughs> he did. So, I mean, they, I mean, talk about a power couple. Real so go-getter. Yeah. <laughs> so then Alice... <laughs> 
Atlas would be oh, found a bucket in a river. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but there's an app for that. He found yeah. water. He founded <laughs> helped found water the water district because he didn't have water to shower. Wow. Uh, there's a theme this morning. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, going to say that's, that's a, interesting, a interesting topic. So Alice at the time there were four <laughs> elementary school districts and all of our kids went to El Camino, Taft, and those kind of things for high school. We were not unified. So Alice said we need to unify. We need to become our own school district. This was in the '50s um, when uh, El Unified was one of the best in the nation. Mm. And people were worried about the taxes increasing. So she ran a special election. She said, I got a chance to talk to her. Um, she'd lost half of her friends. And they, they not only did she lose them, they wouldn't talk to her. Wow. She would walk in a room, they would look at her. I mean, you know, imagine doing something where you lose half of your friends. Right. And it's that controversial. And ran a special election, lost by four votes. She founded a newspaper, the Las Vegas Enterprise to communicate the message of why this had to happen. Wow. Collected $25 for the special election, re-ran it, and they won by four votes the second time. Holy smokes. And awesome. 55 years later, we're a top 2% school district. Oh, so, I mean, talk about the vision and the the fortitude, the persistence and grit, um, you know, to make, to have the vision to see something and the stick to it and to stay with it, despite the personal consequences was, um, you know, she was amazing. And another fun fact, this is fun, she contemplated running for Congress. Guess who she would have run against in Congress? Barry Goldwater. Oh my gosh. She didn't want to raise the money. I mean, she was imminently popular, so I think she would have given Barry a good run for his money, but she yeah. really wasn't interested in raising that kind of money to compete against him. Right. Wow. Understand. I, I will never look at AC Stell uh, Middle School the same way. I mean, totally. talk about just the fortitude, but also, like you said, the fruits of that labor are, uh, that's, that takes a long vision. Um, and it sounds like she made a lot of personal sacrifices in the short term. Switch, uh, interesting book. It uh, was a book that you had brought to our leadership team uh, last, uh, I think a year ago, in terms year of ago. we did a yeah. book study around it. And it's actually now one of the core textbooks, uh, fun fact of the new freshman seminar course. Mm -hmm. So um, let's, let's talk about some of the things that are happening in LVSD. So um, uh, of all the things that are happening in LVSD right now, Dan, what are some of the, the ones that you're most excited about or that are kind of at the top of your mind? Um, uh, the top three would be, um, let's see, in no particular order, the ELA and adoptions. Pretty exciting. I mean, we haven't done adoptions since 2003, so that's huge. Yeah. Um, that'll be a lot of work for the teachers. I mean, that's going to be a heavy lift, but um, I'm excited about that. Um, Kindergarten through 11th grade, adopting new English language arts uh, curriculum, uh, uh, books and classrooms we talked about on previous episodes, but LVSD, a destination district for literacy. All right, so that's number one. The collaborative one. classrooms and the classrooms that'll be in, uh, uh, sorry, the collaborators that'll be in the classrooms. Pretty exciting. Correct. Like four to 600 books per classroom. Four to 600, 600 books for every teacher in LVSD, uh, every student uh, in Las Virginas, K through five, likely also K through eight, will have access to uh, a, a extraordinary number of texts uh, beginning next year. All right, so ELA adoptions at the top of your mind. So what's number two? Uh, graduation change, graduation requirement changes and freshman seminar. Yeah. I'm excited about that. All right, graduation, graduation requirement change the class of 2022, uh, which I believe uh, so you have class. Yeah. So uh, they are starting off next year uh, with the freshman seminar is now their graduation requirement for freshman year. Uh, a lot of it, I was just talking to our assistant principals at the secondary uh, level um, this morning, and they said there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement That's around awesome. freshman seminar, especially with um, the pilot or the, the, the initial kickoff this year. Uh, and then graduation requirement changes. Steve, do you want to talk about those a little bit? What it's, uh, I mean, in addition to freshman seminar, what's the, what are the other components? Well, I think there's been a, uh, I think there's a theme to this work, right? And the idea of Student 360 College Career Whole Child, uh, exploring the idea and, and arriving at it of a three-year math uh, graduation requirement. And I think that, uh, that focus on those uh, career skills is so, uh, such a component and keystone of Las Virginas. And I also think uh, still some work to be done. I, I throw out there a little bit too. Uh, we're never, we're never uh, stopping in the effort to improve and to explore those graduation requirements and um, see all the options and opportunities that we have there for our LDSD students. I wonder too, um, uh, I think there's been a lot of terrific work with Student 360. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, I know I alluded to it earlier, but that, uh, that marriage between college, career, whole child. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, kind of that, that focus on the whole child, what LVUSD has done, and also um, how that relates to kind of, I think, Las Virginas being at the forefront of that focus on um, the, the mental health piece as well. 
So there's my two. Then my third one. Oh, we still have a third. I thought those were two together. Yeah. So I apologize. I like graduation yeah. requirements. We, we jumped the gun. They were together. Okay. Oh, my bad. So yeah. ELA adoption. Yeah. yeah, that was Steve. Graduation, graduation <laughs> and freshman. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Just fear the bus. And the third one. So lots of districts. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think we saw the license plate. <laughs> yeah. um, lots of districts go through ELA adoptions. Yeah. Lots of districts change graduation requirements, yeah. but not lots of districts launch their own credentialing program. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. In fact, none have launched their own credentialing program. So we have embarked <laughs> upon this mission. So Center edX is the other exciting thing yeah. that we're working on. True. First, uh, if you're watching for the first time or you, uh, you see this video uh, as you scroll through the LVOSD Facebook page at facebook.com slash LVOSD, Leave comments, leave questions. Uh, love to love to hear those that feedback. If you're here in Center edX for the first time, uh, our uh, district last year um, pursued accreditation, which is a full year process with the California Commission on Teacher Credentialing. We will be the first school district in the state of California to offer teacher and administrative services credentials. Dan's a professor in um, actually both. Mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, preliminary administrative services credential classes. And I wonder if maybe uh, one or both of you could just kind of reflect on what it's been like to work with that cohort of aspiring administrators, all of whom uh, will have their credentials, be ready to be administrators in this area in the, uh, January of 2019. For me, it speaks to capacity building, right? So um, I think uh, all of us here um, at LBSD are always amazed by the incredible work we see every day of our, our teachers or classified staff and uh, the opportunity to provide uh, leadership opportunities and take uh, the incredible amount of talent we have here at LBSD and provide a program that is centered to their needs. I think that's the key for me is we do um, – I think you mentioned it too, uh, Dr. Steph, uh, top two in the nation, uh, top two in the state, and it's so hard to uh, find that talent elsewhere. So the idea that we can build our own capacity with our own folks who know LVUSD students the best, I think is, uh, is as you mentioned, only one of the only districts, if not the only in the state to have this type of innovation is a huge opportunity for our students, our teachers. Um, and I think I'll speak from the professor lens as well. Uh, someone who is uh, up late getting ready for uh, tomorrow. Big class tomorrow, big the handoff. Big Steve's starting off. Big right. day tomorrow. Um, I found myself learning, right? Mm -hmm. So as I'm going through uh, John Hattie's work on visible learning, a uh, great refresher for me of um, material that uh, you know I learned a few years ago, but also changes every day. Um, and to, for, for our own folks to go through that process, I think uh, only makes us better. So we're modeling lifelong learning. So you said capacity building. I'll use another C word, community. Right. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just amazing to watch because you know, I, I was in a, a guest lecture at a class and just took the class up and walked into my office. And we talked all about, you know, the different elements of being superintendent of Los Virgins. The teachers, the admin candidates have a chance to learn from different principals across the district who they would otherwise never meet. Mm -hmm. I'm a teacher of Bay Laurel. You know, I'm never going to you know work with the principal from Agora or Lindero. We've brought in other superintendents and district staff from around the area. We've had panels with board members. I mean, where do you get a chance for the superintendent cabinet and board members to come in frequently and interact with the class and help the candidates understand, the future administrators understand their role from a board perspective, a board member perspective, and the values of a school board and where school board members come from? I mean, the, the candidates have learned just so much about us in such a relevant context that it's exciting. Yeah, and I, I think too, it's uh, it, this is bigger than LVST. Certainly, we are the hub and the center of the Center for Educational Excellence. But we've had um, Superintendent Moore Park School District. We've had right. uh, administration from uh, CME Conejo, um, and it's been you know we. What's exciting is the that something like this can attract great talented people to the district mm -hmm. and to this area, and that helps kids. It's a win for kids all around. Right. Um, if you're not, if you if you've ever ventured into the uh, educational services wing on a Friday afternoon, you know Steve is the director of curriculum, but he's also the director of athletics. And um, Steve and Dan uh, together talking sports, uh, talking about athletic teams, it's something fun, uh, fun to watch. And I try to uh, try to participate as best I can <laughs> in those conversations. Um, but uh, I wonder if we can do. It's a big year for Dan. Uh, a Philadelphia big, big three uh, native. Yeah. Uh, sorry, big three years. Yeah. So this is me stumbling through this part. But uh, Eagles, 
uh, win the Super Bowl. Yeah, Super Bowl. Villanova wins March Madness. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a big year for you, but it's also a big year for LVSD Sports. And uh, you know, we haven't had a chance to kind of give the athletics breakdown for the year. I'm wondering if maybe we could uh, have a little sports chat. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I could go for hours on this. But yeah. see, see the little twinkle? That's the same twinkle when you put a like on facebook.com slash LVSD. <laughs> It's another, uh, uh, you mentioned LVSD being a destination district for literacy. Uh, the athletic programs, too, I think a huge reason to be a part of LVSD. Um, and I think a, a variety of sports, fall and winter, had tremendous seasons, both at Calabasas and Agora. Uh, different sports, and I think, had different levels of success. But overall, uh, truly, I think uh, it's unbelievable to see the work that our, I'll start with the, the players. Um, we have, uh, from, from a coach's perspective, somebody who used to coach, uh, groups that are not only talented, but more importantly exhibit, I think, the character that you'd want uh, in a student athlete, uh, absolute joy to work with. And then uh, our coaches, I think, are so, um, it, it is one of the most uh, uh, challenging, uh, mentally taxing, uh, commitment with time as well, uh, jobs that we have here in the district. Um, they, they do it day in and day out. And again, the thing that I see that's that's key is the relationships that they have with the kids. Um, so yeah, well, we're about to wrap up uh, spring sports season. Uh, a lot of exciting things going on, baseball, volleyball, uh, and uh, like I said, both schools experiencing success. But I think most importantly, the way they do it, the way they go about it, doing it the right way uh, in Las Vegas. Great. For me, the wins are nice, but I think you mentioned the, the experience the kids have, you know, yeah. shaping them into leaders. I mean. Mm -hmm future the future women and men that will be out there leading us and when i talk to the sports teams and i visit them and i love it um I, you know i expect them to be leaders on the field <clears throat> um on the track and in the classroom and in the community and in the gym and in the gym um so and they take to that message yeah and i mean that's what sports can you know give you and the mind body connection relative right. to academic success i've seen it with my own children um it is huge, and you know, fitness is um, a lifelong skill, um, and taking care of, of the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that physical literacy is super important. Uh, you both are so, you know, uh, one thing I've been impressed about is you guys are both so hands-on with the teams. You know, you see you out there uh, with the kids uh, taking knee, and there's you know, Dan's offering some words of wisdom, and like you said, that's. When you have a captive audience, you're talking about leadership, you're talking about character, you're talking about compassion, grit, and persistence, and never right. giving up. Um, that a lot is, of the elements that you see in Student 360 um, are inherent in that process. And speaking of Student 360, so Student 360 has been kind of our core uh, core mission in terms of college career and whole child. Uh, exciting day that all three of us will be a part of, Saturday, May 12th is the Community 360 Conference. And um, really exciting, if you haven't seen uh, the emails coming out, you can go to parent360.eventbrite.com, parent360.eventbrite.com. whole community is welcome to attend. Free tickets, although space is limited. We have about 150 RSVPs uh, to date. Uh, one thing that's been really exciting is uh, the partnership to help put this on with um, our great friends who have been longtime uh, partners of the district at Engage and Ludington Institute, Given Hour, and even Lost Hills Sheriff's Department. Dr. Deputy Dave Diesel will be there uh, on Saturday, May 12th. There's breakout sessions. Uh, Dr. Dan, you'll be giving the keynote um, to kick us off, all talking about the importance of um, social emotional health and wellness and well-being, um, but also um, how to support our children uh, in a world where there's no operator's manual um, for being a parent. So Saturday, May 12th, come join us. You don't have if you can't make the whole day, still RSVP and uh, come at least attend one session. Um, we'd love to have you, and I'm wondering if uh, either of you might. Share some of your reflections, or were, um, yeah, I, about I think excited. Just looking forward to it. Uh, we have also, I think, something that's really neat uh, to conclude it. We'll have a student panel, and I think that will be. Um, I, we're working with uh, a few kids from each of our high school campuses, Agora, Calabasas, and kind of talking about uh, what they what was their big takeaway from the day. Another thing um, that I think that is really key about the day is the focus on obviously said whole child. Uh, you know, mental health, but school safety too, right? So partners uh, from Ludington, from Lost Hills, um, our folks here in LVUSD, I think, it sh again, it shows kind of, um, I really feel Las Vegas has been at the forefront of uh, all of those elements, whether it's safety, whether it's mental wellness. And I think uh, to kind of have that all on display 
uh, working together on the 12th. It's going to be a really cool day uh, for the community. I think staff, too, would love to see uh, our, our classified, our certificated folks out there uh, come support the students and come see, uh, again, I think kind of really the pinnacle of what uh, LDSD is all about. Interesting connection on this, the student safety piece. Um, right. You know, people don't often think about the softer elements of school culture and how important that is for um, student safety. But research has shown time and time again, um, you know, what an inclusive school culture mm -hmm. where kids are connected to each other and connected to trusted adults, mm -hmm. um, all elements of student 360 um, so that they aren't isolated. And um, because when kids are isolated or adults are isolated, they can contemplate you know, bad choices, self-harm or harm to others. So yeah. um, I was always impressed with Las Virgins coming from another district when it's focused on social emotional health. Mm -hmm. I think that this district has led that area um, for decades and uh, continues uh, through this process. So the, the, the elements of 360 that connect to student safety should not be underestimated. They're, they're powerful and research-based. Great. Saturday, May 12th, again, free tickets, parent360.eventbrite.com. Bring a friend. I know it's uh, it's uh, that time of year when there's an event all the time. There's uh, homework. There's final tests. There's AP tests. Uh, come give yourself the gift of a little soul food on Saturday, May 12th, uh, Community 360 Conference. Um, we'd love to see you out there. Uh, so we're, uh, we're kind of transitioning this into the conclusion of the show. It. Yeah. Uh, I wondered uh, this morning, I was thinking about this, I was pumped, excited, um, and I'm wondering if you could, Dan, share what are some of the best parts about being a superintendent? I know we have, uh, you know, definitely a future superintendent sitting to your left. Um, he's over there, Steve. Yeah, uh, that, that guy, you know, yeah. that guy at the end of the table. He's on yeah. camera. He's, he's watching us, yeah. Uh, but yeah, what's, what are the best parts? Like, what do you love about your job? Because you've been, you've been principal, you've been assistant soup of HR, now you're superintendent, um, and certainly, um, You've been uh, been here for many years. We're lucky to have your uh, consistent and visionary leadership. What what's the best part? You'd be like than directors who are just uh, lost for just live. <laughs> yeah. Huge part. This it, this moment right now. It's the it's, likes at Facebook.com. Totally what he's gonna say. Right. It looks yeah. like they're at three <laughs> or at three. It's the live. This is the live part. Very few. Uh, we don't have as much big a live audience as we do a table. So um, some of the best parts. It's it, it's. Um, as a teacher, you're just in the classroom and really connected to the students, which I miss. But as a superintendent, you kind of get to see, you know, the whole 360 of the school district. I get to interact with city council members, um, you know, parents, local leaders, politicians, students, student leaders, staff, you, you know, all of it, um, which is exciting and rewarding. Um, we are the largest employer in the region. Schools are critical to the success of a community and a society. So. To be, um, to be able to see all the different pieces and see how amazing and, and well-functioned they are and understanding everyone's role in making it all happen, it's exciting. Nice. That's awesome. I, I, I've worked in five uh, districts and I've never seen a superintendent who, um, I, I kind of wonder sometimes how you guys get change. Because like I'll see a, a Twitter picture of you and doing the color run at AC Still Middle School, and then uh, you're at another event, and I just I think uh, just how visible you are. I think uh, for every child and teacher and staff member to know your name and know you're approachable, um, that's a very unique part of LDSD. So yeah, couldn't agree more. I think uh, uh, the thing that I love most about LDSD is the focus on relationships. I think that comes from you. At the top. Uh, we certainly. Uh, Appreciate that wholeheartedly. So final part of today's uh, agenda is we're going to do Steve's evaluation live <laughs> on LVSD Live. So we'll start at the top. No, no, start? this is all part of, uh, it's, it's reality TV. It's can we the, cut right now? It's what the kids are doing. <laughs> no, we can cut right now. Uh, Dan, thanks for joining us. I know it was a sprint to the finish. Like any day, there's always things before and right after. Um, so thanks so much for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next week. Steve, do you, uh, do you have the guest list in front of you in terms of who's I do live? not. I was actually just trying to rack my brain. Uh, uh, for it, uh, promise you, uh, we will have another exciting guest as we pull it up each and every week. Yeah. Pressure's on, right? We got we're going off in five seconds, and I don't have it. So we don't next have week's it. Mystery guest, mystery guest, 40 a.m. every week. Facebook.com slash LVSD, YouTube.com slash LVSD. And with that, Steve, with your hands on the stop recording button, my hand is too. Have a great, have a great week, week.